Hi VIP Kid teachers, it's me again and today I'm going to teach you about overlays in OBS. So what is an overlay? An overlay is something that sits in front of your camera in your OBS screen. So this is a great way to decorate your classroom. It's not a prop. So a prop is something that you pop up on and off using that icon that's a little eye and it's there when you need it. So like a sun or raining or something to interact with your students. An overlay is a little different. It's a little more permanent and it's all about decoration. So today I've taken away my green screen because I want you to see that this works whether you're green screening or not. Um, but in our traditional classroom, right, we used to like hang things on our walls, put our name up. But, you know, it's always like getting behind your head when you're talking. When you started green screening, if you're a green screener, you started putting like some nice background stuff behind you. But same thing, it's all behind you. Overlays let you bring it out in front and decorate. Now, for me, I do green screen, but with overlays, I do not when I travel. All I need is a blank wall, and I can decorate my classroom any way I want with no green screen and no physical props. So today I'm gonna to show you some examples, and then I'm gonna talk about how to make it in OBS and give you an example of how to make it outside of OBS. So let's start with some examples. So the first is something called a lower third. Now a lower third is simply something that goes along the very bottom, such as your name. You've probably seen this in newscasts. Here's mine. This stays up almost every class for me because I work with lower level students and we do a lot of practicing our names and this gets them to practice saying my name or saying like, teacher I need help or teacher I don't know Lauren can you help me so I use this for reference for them a whole lot but I don't always have my name up sometimes I want something a little more fun so this example is for the upcoming Dragon Boat Festival holiday so Meg Mike and Anna are all going to go Dragon Boat racing during our classroom you can also do things like creating a border but the big thing is, is to remember that you need to leave yourself space to TPR. So this overlay is super high, actually. You can see it's almost to the tops of my shoulders, and this is almost too high because I still need space to move my hands and let my face be seen and not make it too distracting. Um, so you really want to keep in mind that you're decorating the outsides of your classroom since it's going to be in front of you. So how do you make these in OBS? It's just as simple as you've always done. You find some images and you add them to OBS as an image capture and then you arrange them on your screen. Now if you didn't know, in OBS you can actually group things together, right? So you can put them all grouped together so you can easily turn it on and off just like this. Boop, boop. Right? Nice and easy. But then you're going to have like all these overlays, then your webcam, then all your backgrounds. I personally like to keep things super simple and straightforward. I do not like to clutter my OBS and you'll see that in a lot of YouTube videos for OBS in general with gaming streamers and that's because you want to be able to change things on the fly but you don't want to overcomplicate it where you can't find what you need or it's showing the wrong thing. So the only time you need to add something to your overlay in OBS if you build it outside is if you want there to be movement. Uh, I tend to avoid movement during class time, so in my welcome and goodbye screens that's great, but I don't really love them in my overlays because I find it very distracting since it's going to stay up the whole class or almost the whole class. Alright, so let's talk about building OBS outside and getting this together in another program. Now, if you are Googling this, you are going to hear a lot about use Photoshop and use Adobe Illustrator and all these like fancy things. You do not need anything fancy. You only need a couple of things. One, PNG images. So their file at the end, their file type is .png and that's what makes them transparent, right? So that's why I can reach behind the sun and you can still see my hand behind sort of the rays of the sun. You need the PNG file for that. The second thing you need is Google. That's it. You only need Google. So let's go take a look at my Google Drive and I'll show you where to find it. Okay, so welcome to my Google Drive. This is where I have been making overlays. So all you need to do is go to wherever you want to save this in your Google Drive folder. Click the new button 
come down to more and you want to make a Google drawing. Once you've made that drawing, you want to go over here and you want to go ahead and title it something so that you know what it is later on. By default, it's going to give you a nice square box, which is perfect. It's exactly the dimensions you need for this to fit into your VIP Kid classroom. And you're going to see this like checkered background. So all of that checkered background is the transparent part of the image. So anything that you see that has that checkered background is going to be transparent in the final image. But if you see something that's actually like white, that means it's not going to be transparent or any other solid color. Okay, now that we've got our PNG images and our Google drawing, I'm going to go ahead and drag those PNG files from my computer over onto this Google drawing. You can also go to insert image and upload from your computer. So this image is not wide enough, right? Because I need to fill this whole square box. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a corner and drag it so that it's wide enough. Now, obviously that's too big. It's taking up my whole square box. So I'm going to crop it down to what I actually want because I knew when I got this image that I actually only want this very little bit. And to get to crop, it's just this little square image here. And then you can just drag the line. Okay, so now I have what I actually want. And I'm going to crop off the top two just so it's out of my way. Okay, so now I have this nice little square box. I'm going to line it up at the bottom. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so there's the bottom of my border and um, I could just do the bottom. I do try to do bottom and top or at least something on one of the sides because that's just my preference. That's just what I like. So I grab this like super awesome looking cloud. If I grab this little circle up on the top, I can change the way it looks. So I'm actually going to make it a little bit smaller. And I don't want the whole cloud because I don't want to take up that much image. So anything that's outside the box is going to get cut off. I'm going to do another one. I'm actually going to use the other half of this cloud that you can't see on the first side. Perfect. Okay, so I have my image. Now the question is, is does it work? So one thing that's really easy to do to know if this is going to work before you get it into OBS is use in Windows the snipping tool. So what the snipping tool lets me do is grab my image from OBS. So I pulled up my OBS and I'm going to go ahead and hide my overlays and I'm literally going to use the snipping tool to screenshot this box of me smiling. Okay, so now that I grab my image, I can paste it right on in and then I'm going to make it as big as my Google drawing and I can right click and hit order and send to back because I want it to be behind everything else and now I know what it's going to look like in my classroom. So now you can make any adjustments you need to get everything perfectly set and then once you're happy with that you want to delete this image back out because we don't need it, right? Because we want that transparent background to be the biggest part of this whole thing. So once you're satisfied with your image you're going to go up here to file, download and download a brand new PNG that's perfect for you. From there, we can hop right on back over to our OBS. Hello. And we're going to add it to our OBS. So, so now I'm in my OBS and I've got my scenes and sources and I want to add a new source image. I'm going to call it overlay example because that's what I named the file. Browse to my downloads and grab it. And now it's an OBS. Great. Cool. Perfect. Right? No, it's like weirdly off centered. So now I can drag it over and grab the corners and make it so that it, look at that, just perfectly fits my image. And there's my overlay. Now I like to group my overlay. So you can see over here that I'm going to drag it into my little overlay groupings folder. Now the important thing is, is your overlays need to be above your webcam, not below. Backgrounds are below. Things that are in front are above. So that's the way you can remember where it needs to go. In front is above, behind is below on your sources list. And now I've got my overlay and now I can simply turn my overlay on and off all I'd like and I'm good to go. If you are feeling a little overwhelmed, that's okay. 
If you come join our Facebook group, I am going to give you some examples to go ahead and import to OBS, including the one that I made today, so that you can just grab that file and use it and give it a try to see if you like it. So I'll send you some of my favorite examples. I hope you have fun making overlays and I'll see you later.